In this lesson, we'll begin setting up the beginnings of our node tree. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the node graph here. I am in your project file in eight underscore begin in the HROX file, but if we go into this street level, we're going to be connected to the nuke script for our street level version one. And I haven't changed the version yet because we haven't added anything. But as soon as we begin making changes to our node graph, we will want to save a new version at the end of each lesson and then jump over and relink it um, for the next lesson in your project file. So this is going to be a little bit different in the project files than it normally would be, but we'll walk through that together so you don't get lost or confused on how they interact with each other. Okay, so let's start by grabbing our two dragon shots there. And I'm just going to pull those over here. And you have a couple of choices for where you can start compositing in this view that we have here. So you can start compositing after you've already added the grade and um, all of that stuff. But if you want to work with your original footage, you can actually begin merging in right here. I'm going to choose to merge into this middle area right there. You wouldn't want to do it anytime after any of these nodes. You want it to be either here or at some point in here. Um, so best practice would either be right there or there. So let's go ahead and hit tab and add in a merge node. And I'm just gonna drop that onto my main pipe. And let's just go ahead and merge that onto our color. And see how this looks. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot forward a little bit here. I also don't wanna look at my annotations for now, so I'm just gonna unhook that and just hook that straight into the right node. And let's just kind of scrub forward. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. And the reason for that is because my read nodes aren't really at the right place. This starts on frame 181. And this is gonna start on frame zero. So I'm gonna have to add a time offset. So I'm gonna hit the tab key and we'll type in time offset. And I'm just gonna drop that after my read node. And because that starts on 181, I want mine to start on 181. So I will add that. And now as I begin clicking through, you can see we've got our dragon, but it doesn't look right because we don't have our alpha. So let's go ahead and add a shuffle copy to use this alpha. So I'll hit the tab key and we'll add our shuffle copy. Now, when you're using a shuffle copy, you want your number one to go into the alpha and your two to go into the color when it's just a really basic setup like this. And then because this is going into the red channel, that alpha is being read by the red channel, we'll just want to drop that into the red right there. And then I'm just gonna hook that time offset into the shuffle copy and that way both of those nodes, those read nodes will be time offset. Perfect, so now we get a really nice, very beautiful image of our dragon. Well, sort of beautiful. We still need a little bit of work to really make this look great. So a couple of things we need to do here. If I move backwards and I come in and I really start kind of looking around the edge of my dragon, you might feel that the edge of it looks like it has a little bit of a kind of a darkness to it. And it's going to become more apparent when we add a blur. So we may need to deal with that. But because I can't see it very prominently yet, we'll wait just a little bit before we really start to fix any issues we have because of an error with the alpha. But um, that is probably going to be something we'll need to deal with later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of some blurring to this because right now he looks extremely stark. And honestly, it's a pretty um, 
low poly model that we have rendered here, but that's okay because he's gonna start to look really real once he gets some motion blur. So we're going to venture into the new territory of the motion blur that we get um, with the new Nuke Studio. So we have um, some updated uh, nodes in the motion blur and the vector generator. So I'm going to add both of those. And it's not necessarily that they've changed a lot in the way that they work. It's just that they have updated the algorithms for these nodes to really work better and just kind of remain competitive with similar things that are out there for people to use. So we're going to come in here and I'm just going to add these after the time offset, the vector generator first, and then the motion blur second. And to be able to use this vector generator, I want to plug in that vector pipe into the vector generator. And then I'm going to hold the control key and kind of pull that out so that I can see um, that this is moving in here. And I can actually just pull that right into the source as well if you feel that that is maybe a little bit of an easier way to, to view this. Okay, so there we go. And now we can go in and start to edit this a little bit. So right now we don't have very many samples. I'm gonna turn this up to about 20. And that looks a lot more realistic and already it, it actually looks pretty good. So that is going to be um, just a little bit better way that you can use motion blur with you know, the passes that you have, whether or not you've put out a, a motion vector pass, you don't have to, you can just use this um, and it's going to give you some really nice motion blur. Um, a motion vector pass is always nice, but you're not always going to get one of those. And sometimes you might need to use it with some live action footage um, that you obviously wouldn't be able to put out a motion vector pass because it's not coming from CG. So this is going to be something that is really going to enhance your work whenever you're working with something like this. And you can go in and begin editing those um, settings more if you like. You can play through and maybe start to see, but you will notice that this does slow us down quite a bit. But um, as you can tell, um, we, we are getting a really nice blur here. However, um, just kind of looking back, I'm just going to arrow back a little bit here. We are getting some artifacting when I was zoomed in a little bit here. Let's see if we have any kind of change there. I'll just move backwards a bit here. And I just want to make sure that that pass isn't actually creating any artifacts for us with the vector generator. If you do notice that, you can go in and start to play around with this vector detail a little bit, and that will help you to have a cleaner image. So overall, this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on to our next lesson where we're going to be doing a little bit more work on this image um, and we're going to kind of start to begin understanding we're going to begin understanding versioning in nuke s and to just kind of kick start that conversation we need to be able to save what we've done here so to do that i'll just go to file and I'll go to save new comp version. And now this comp is going to be saved as comp version two because we were in version one earlier. And if I pull this down, you can see that now says version two just there. So let's come back in the next lesson and I'll show you how that is relevant when you're in the sequence view um, on that main uh, area here because it's still showing comp version one. So I'll show you how to fix that in the next lesson.